The Franco-Prussian War of 1870-71 remade the political map in Europe and put a newly unified Germany at the centre of European affairs, a position that despite numerous conflicts, it still holds today. But what is often less thought of when discussing the Franco-Prussian War is what role America, thousands of miles away, thought about the conflict and what actions it took concerning both sides of the war. From the outset of the war, the USA favoured Germany over France. It was thought by most in the US that France was clearly the aggressor, as they had taken what they perceived as an insult to the French ambassador in the so-called Ems telegram as justification for war, and the French were attempting to advance into German territory. Furthermore, America was unlikely to favour France, since French-American relations were already sour after the French had tried to install Austrian Prince Maximilian as Emperor of Mexico during the American Civil War. This was in violation of the Monroe Doctrine, which stated that European empires should not try to establish spheres of influence or new colonies in the Americas. France and the US normally had fairly cordial relations dating all the way back to the French support of the American Revolution, and especially when France was the lone republic in Europe. But throughout the Franco-Prussian War, France was ruled by Napoleon III, the nephew of the more famous Napoleon I who led France in the Napoleonic Wars. France had also granted belligerency status to the Confederacy during the American Civil War, which meant the Confederates could buy weapons in France and even let private citizens give the Confederacy loans totaling $15 million. To put it bluntly, French-American relations were at an all-time low at the outset of the Franco-Prussian War whereas the relationship between the US and the German states was growing ever closer, as many Americans looked favourably on what they perceived as the dynamic leadership of the North German Chancellor Otto von Bismarck. Also, this was a time of massive German emigration to the US, with around a million German immigrants arriving in the 1860s alone. America in 1871 was led by President Ulysses S. Grant, former United States General and Commander-in-Chief of the Union Army in the latter part of the Civil War. And in the course of that war, 250,000 ethnic Germans had enlisted and fought with the Union Army, and so Grant had a personal preference towards Germany. Nevertheless, America declared neutrality in the conflict, but America also acted as what is known as a protecting power for the German states, whereby the Americans took over the German embassy in Paris for the duration of the war and helped give Germans who were in France at the start of the war safe passage back home, whereas the United Kingdom acted as the protecting power for France in Germany. In fact, one American diplomat would be especially celebrated for his humanitarian actions in the Franco-Prussian War. In the final stages of the war, with the Germans besieging Paris with artillery, the American ambassador to France, Elihu Washburn, was vital in organizing relief for foreign nationals, including Germans and Latin Americans, trapped inside the city, and acted as an intermediary between the French and German governments to end the fighting. Washburn thus set the precedent for neutral nations providing aid during war and was honoured after the war by both France and Germany for his actions. With France defeated, the French sought help from the Americans to guarantee their territorial integrity against German demands in the peace negotiations. President Grant was still reluctant to give support to France and responded privately saying that France, having without provocation entered upon this war, with scarcely a concealed intention to dispossess Prussia of a portion of her territory, could not complain and was not entitled to sympathy if the result of this war deprived her of a portion of her own territory. As a result, France lost the territory of Alsace-Lorraine to Germany. From all this, we get a clear sense of just how much of a favourable stance the United States took towards Germany in the Franco-Prussian War. But with Napoleon III defeated and ousted from power, France once again became a republic, and after that, French-American relations greatly improved. So much so, that only 15 years after the war, France would gift the Statue of Liberty to the United States. On another note, Britain was another European power which had rocky relations with the US at the time, due to their earlier support of the Confederacy and their building of warships for the Confederate Navy. But Britain was so alarmed by the growing power of the newly united German Empire that they also decided to make moves to improve their relations with the Americans. And so, a year after the Franco-Prussian War, Britain settled the damages and costs caused by the British-built Confederate warships, the so-called Alabama Claims, named for a British-built Confederate warship, on terms favourable to the Americans, moving the two nations closer to the special relationship we know today. And so, while during the Franco-Prussian War, the Americans were very favourable to the Germans, the war also set the stage for better relations between the French, British and Americans that would ultimately lead America to join these two powers in a war against Germany four decades later.
I hope you enjoyed this video and thanks for watching. If you'd like to see more from Newsreel History and help more content get made, please consider subscribing and I'll see you next time.